I'm Sean. This is Johnny Reads. It's Friday morning. It's a very kind of windy and blustery day. Uh, quite rainy as well. I have been up since 5.45. <laughs> I went to teach a yoga class this morning at 7am. So I'm I'm wide awake. It's only 10. Feels like I've done a whole day. Um, I've got a book haul. I have been not buying books. So um, this is the first kind of proper pile of books I've bought this year. I bought a few at the beginning of the year with like some leftover Christmas money. Um, and then I didn't buy anything for February. I didn't buy anything for the first kind of week of March and the last second half of um, January as well. Um, and I was just reading stuff I had and library books. And also because like I hadn't got much money after like Christmas and car and paying a big tax bill so I didn't really have any money to spare so I've been trying to kind of yeah get back on track money wise and book wise and then um I had a couple of kind of trips this week just kind of day trips where I knew I was gonna go to bookshops and buy some books and that is what happened and then I felt like once I had started it kind of <laughs> opened up this kind of floodgate where I was just like well I'll just buy that one uh, I'll just buy one more. So I'm now I've bought these. I've got two that I ordered online that haven't come yet. Um, I'm gonna have to take another little break for a little while. Uh, yeah, these are the books. So the first three were actually um, gifts from Bert. So he bought me this one when he went back to see his mum in Milton Keynes. Um, and this is Miami by Joan Didion. Um, and this is uh, set in 1987, so it's obviously non-fiction. Um, I don't know about this one. I've never seen it, but I've since uh, having this one, I've seen that there's a few, um, a few in this series of different places. So it kind of comes under reportage um, or not a non-fiction. So I, I can't remember where the other places were, but anyway, that looks uh, really great. And then he also got me two books kind of around female friendship for my little kind of treat box. Um, one of them was Text Me When You Get Home by Kayleen Schaefer, Kayleen Schaefer. Um, and it's like a non-fiction about female friendship and about how um, women are portrayed kind of as, um, you know, being really bitchy to each other, whereas actually women have really strong female friendships. So, yeah. That's that one. And then also um, The Animators, and it's one that I've kind of wanted to read for a little while. It's fiction. It's by um, Kayla Ray Whitaker, and it's about two women who meet in college when they're um, animation students, and then they become like animators together. And I think maybe they, they oh, they have to examine their relationship. I was wondering if they fell out. Um, I really like a kind of art college <laughs> novel, so I'm hoping that will satisfy that. Um, then these are the books I bought myself. So we went to um, Bristol to go to a performance, to see a performance artist called Ultimate Dancer, um, which was amazing. <laughs> if I could find, I think there might be videos, I'll see if I can find one and, and uh, put it in the description. Um, it was like an hour performance, which is kind of all to do with, um, had lots of lights and, um, strange noises at the first kind of 20 minutes we were just pretty much stuck in sort of sat in complete darkness with like a little bit of a uh, <laughs> little bit of sound now and again yeah so um before that we uh, i did a little bit of book shopping so these are the ones i bought in bristol i got um we went to foils and i got freshwater by equipe amazi which i've been wanting to read for a little while um I think it's actual spinster i can't remember your name sorry i think it is actual spinster <laughs> she was saying how much she liked it and um it made me want to read it and then i know that everyone i've seen who's read it has liked it and now it's of course it's up for the women's prize i think it's up from other prizes as well lambda prize um so yeah and i also bought uh deborah levy's second volume in her memoir and this one is the cost of living um, I really enjoyed the first one, which was Things I Don't Want to Know. And I think this one is more about her um, writing. Um, I think it's like a quite a bit later than the first one. So, yes. Oh, it's got really big font as well. So that will be a quick one. I really like the design on these. I think we're all excited about this one. This is Slayer 
by Kirsten White. So this is Young Adult Fantasy. It's set in the Buffy world. I haven't looked into it so much, too much that, so I don't know if any of those original characters are still in it or if it's just that world. So, mm. <laughs> Kirsten White wrote, um, has written a couple of other young adult novels. She wrote one called um, And I Darken, which is kind of a retelling of like, Vlad the Impaler. And I got that and I started it a couple of times, but I haven't really got very far with it. So I'm thinking Slayer will be more fun. And then this one, I hadn't heard of, but I saw it in Files in Bristol and it's Permission by Saskia Vogel. And it was on the table. And what kind of drew me in initially was this really beautiful um, pink cover. And then also it's got Blurred by Janet Fitch. And I love Janet Fitch. And that's what kind of made me, made me pick it up. And it's beautiful, she says, beautifully written mysterious and compelling and then um i was slightly put off by what it's about because it says that it is about this girl who meets a dominatrix um and this dominatrix has a 50 something house 50 something year old house boy called piggy and and that i didn't i don't like the sound of piggy or really dominatrix it also says in the back that if joan didion had written about bdsm community in la it may have felt a bit like permission <laughs> so yeah the subject matter kind of slightly put me off, but then um, Bert was saying that he wanted to read it as well, and he'd seen a he'd kind of he was following the author on Instagram, and he was interested in it. So, and then Janet said it was good, and also this is on dialogue books. So I wasn't really aware of dialogue books, and um, the guys in the shop were saying about them. And I think this is the first hardback on dialogue books, and it's an imprint um, of Little Brown, and they have they publish kind of inclusive fiction, so. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to see how I've just started this one. I think it's going to be good. And I'm going to have a look at their other books as well. And I'll perhaps link that too, if I remember. Then we went to Waterstones because I had heard that Waterstones had a special edition of Daisy Jones and the Sits. <gasps> with these beautiful black edges. So I wanted to get one of those. And then I think this was the last one. I don't know if they had another stash. But it's also a signed edition. So that was like extra fun. And it's such a beautiful looking book as well. So both um, me and Bert have read this one, but we had a proof copy, so we wanted to have a finished copy as well. Um, and yeah, it's about a fictional band um, in the kind of 70s, late 60s, early 70s. Um, and it's kind of told from now and they're looking back um, at a particular time period when they got really big and then broke up. And it's... Um, it's so much fun. I'll talk about it a bit more in my wrap up. And then the other book I picked up from Waterstones was this one, which is Suicide Blonde by Darcy Stink. Um, I was initially kind of drawn to this one because it's got an introduction by Maggie Nelson. Also, it's got this feminist cult, cult classic on the front. And then I remembered that I'd read another book by her. Um, I'd read Sister Golden Hair, which I'd enjoyed. So um, this just is quite slim. I think it is going to be good. It's a story about Jessie and she's a 29 year old adrift in San Francisco um demi monde of sexually ambiguous drug taking outsiders desperately trying to sustain a connection with her bisexual boyfriend and then also something called Madam Pig so I've got Pig and then I've got Piggy in the other one that was my Bristol books then this week um I went to Bath I went to meet up with my friend Nicola and um, we used to work in Otticus together in Aberystwyth um and i hadn't seen her for 10 years um and we realized that Brist um bath is like an app is actually just an hour away for both of us exactly an hour so we could meet there and it's exactly halfway and our trains got in at exactly the same time so we just met up and we had lunch and went book shopping and it was delightful i mean it rained all day but it was also delightful so we went to mr b's um and if you've been to bath or if you're thinking of going mr b's is lovely um i had been there a few years ago and it's actually um got a little bit bigger since i've been there so there's it's got lots of little rooms so um with different kind of uh subject matters in each room so it's like downstairs you'd go for memoir um it's got a really sweet children's section um and it just kind of feels nice and sort of cozy in there um, I got Aquacorn Cove because it was there and I've been wanting it for ages, I just haven't bought it. And this is by Katie O'Neill. Of course, she wrote Tea Dragon Society and Princess Princess Ever After. Um, her, her illustrations are just so lovely. 
It's so pretty. And um, I think she's someone that you could read it as a child, but you can read it as an adult as well. And they're just really sweet. So this is a story about um, some incredible creatures, which is a colony of aquacorns, which are small, magical, seahorse-like creatures. And then um, they, I think they're like... Uh, this there's like it, their lives are in peril kind of from environmental destruction i think and she's uh, the main character is trying to save them cutest thing ever and then i got another graphic novel me and nicola both bought one of these so we're going to read it at the same time and this is the prince and the dressmaker by jen wang and this looks really great as well and i've seen people talking about this one and they seem to have liked it and then the last book i got which was from um uh, Mr. B's was Anne Patchett's The Story of, this is the story of a happy marriage. Um, I've had this one in my uh, like basket online for ages and it's non-fiction so it's a memoir. Um, she, I think there's a painful early divorce and then an eventual happy marriage but also she opens a book in Nashville as well so it sounds really lovely. It says an irresistible blend of literature and memoir. That looks great. And that's all the books so kind of quite a big pile and I quite like that they are kind of nice sort of springy summery colours as well. So those are all of them. Let me know if you've read them, what you think of them. Um, yeah, so I've started on permission. So if you've read it, uh, I'm really interested to know what you think. Or if you've read any of the others that are on this um, dialogue books. Thank you so much. I'll see you soon. Bye.